zeg heeft het andere ook dat ik weg ben. Ja. Dus we kunnen het echt zelf vast zoeken. Ja. Ik heet Ralf van der Schaar. Ik zit hier in Noord-Denemarken, boven de kop van Jutland. Uh, in uh, Noord-Denemarken dus. Op um, reis met het ballongezelschap uh, dat uh, op bezoek is in de oudste, wat zal ik zeggen, bijna uh, hippie-kolonie van uh, Denemarken. En dat is Tularen. En we zijn een kleine excursie aan het houden uh, naar het museum uh, vlak in de buurt. Het is het Kirsten Kjerr Museum. Waar een verzameling kunst is uh, rond een, um, een uh, oude Deense dame die een aantal jaar geleden overleden is. Die heet Kirsten Kerr. En die is in de tijd, in de dertiger jaar ongeveer, uh, Californië uitgesmeten. Omdat ze op scène uh, plaatjes van vrouwen uh, maakte. Uh, volgens de Amerikanen tenminste. Uh, ik heb hier naast mij uh, Harald, die directeur is van het museum. En ik wil hem een paar vragen stellen. Harald, 
Um, this museum, it is uh, uh, amazing, uh, I must say, because um, uh, one of the things uh, besides the beautiful art, it has this very open um, atmosphere and there's nearly no difference anymore between uh, the art and the public and the artists. Uh, can you tell uh, maybe something about the policy and the philosophy behind uh, this idea where, well, there is such an... Uh, well, uh, yeah, what it is, Kirsten Kier Museum, which uh, has so many things and uh, functions for so many people as an incredible place. Well, first of all, I'm a local boy from this area, so I know the people around here, and Kirsten Kier was also born in this area. So when we started the museum, we sort of thought that uh, you can't... Uh, do that in your home home country because I mean up here people will certainly not regard neither Kirsten Kerr uh, nor me as anything special I mean why should we have a museum so we had to go about it in a quite a different way just start very slowly and also sort of de-snop art that this to work to exhibit art and to show art should not be anything snobbish or just for it for the for, or capitalistic or anything else we would just show some pictures and give the opportunity of all artists to exhibit here uh, not the famous ones because they can always manage and we are too far away from them anyway so we started slowly we didn't use any press or anything and we wanted to see if it could survive this way or not and now it's been growing, growing, growing and now the local people also come here, all sorts of people come here also because we have always a variety of art here and more and more come to appreciate Kirsten Kerr's portraits. She has mainly been painting human beings because she was so sensitive to human beings. Uh, whenever she saw a person, she got a very strong impression of that person immediately, and it's this impression she she painted more than the uh, photographic uh, painting. And um, this is now becoming more and more interested of people because she painted that in a period where everything was abstract art so and they couldn't place her the art critic so she has been unique in many ways but mm, still is not any uh, famous and what what is fame in the art world it is mainly a, a business question uh, anyway we have created this we are amateurs so we did not go about it in the ordinary way we felt what will survive out here in the country and it's become a place where people come with their picnic and they can sit down they know they can always uh, well get a seat uh, outside the rain and uh, they can and then we uh, we have never made much propaganda but <laughs> just being a bit different is enough propaganda if you see what I mean. The idea you asked about, I think I'm floating away a bit too much from the idea uh, but the idea is changing all the time. Uh, we have to feel the artists and what they want to express, respect them they decide always how their art is to hang if they want to and, and uh, uh, then they uh, just to give them an opportunity because no artists are rich or anything and, and we wanted them to have this opportunity to exhibit and see if they could make it so we don't take any provision when, if they sell something and uh, you can then ask why we how we can do that well we we are not we are not particularly rich, but um, we work outside working hours to make a bit of money to for the running costs of the museum, 
And we don't want to be a state museum because then we get all this control, control of this and that and everything. So we are trying to stay free of state money so we can decide ourselves what to do and um, when to do it. So it's no problem for us to take a lot of um, artists in from one day to the other. I mean, they come from Russia, they come from the Baltics, and we don't have to ask anyone, may they come. And when they come, they work here a bit, and they exhibit, and they're happy with it. So we have had an art colony this year, and now we also have a music colony, because uh, they also just come and then they live here for two weeks. And so we have united uh, art, uh, paintings, and music, and uh, we may think of something else also. Talking too much. Thank you, Harald. Uh, I have a question. You mentioned uh, uh, one thing which is a nice, uh, which is a nice uh, uh, expression. I think you want to de-snob art. On the other hand, you mentioned the word you don't want to be a state uh, institution. Now, there was a rumor, and I, this is on Dutch television, so uh, that the, so it doesn't matter, maybe so much that I mentioned this, but there was a rumor that the Queen of Denmark was here not so long time ago uh, in uh, Hidden. Uh, that means it needs at least some uh, criteria of selection for artists to uh, exhibit here. You cannot take uh, any hippie who passes by <laughs> to get him his, art, uh, his art exhibited here. So can you, uh, is it not a very difficult position to be in? At one side, very open. At the other side, you have to keep up, of course, uh, anyway, rather high standard. How, how do you do that? Well, I mean, I thought the hippie standard was also, could also be high standards. I think many artists are originally hippies. In a way, I think Kirsten Kerr was the most natural hippie that you could think of. I don't know how, how the years in California influenced her, but I think she, she is... I have never met a more natural hippie. Not really knowing how to define a hippie, but her dresses were her dresses and they were colorful. Her behavior was very natural. She came out to me in Africa where I worked for 15 years and she felt so at home between the African women. They loved her, they laughed with her and she in a way when she was cleaning her flat which she didn't do a lot but sometimes her mother was cleaning all the time sometimes she wanted to clean it in the staircases and she would do it in the African way by throwing a bucket of water down the stairs and then follow the water downwards and sort of her own ways everything and I have learned a lot of that and also her way of approaching people very direct never talking no talk but I mean a lot of nice things and very important things she would talk to people about. She could sit at the bank in the, uh, at a bench in, in the center of Copenhagen and approach people coming near the bench and just saying, you are so beautiful, come and talk a bit with me, or you look so intelligent, why don't you come and sit with me a bit? And You look as if you are very happy today, come and talk with me. And this approach not so many people they have that but she i have seen how she was always successful by approaching people like that and it, i think i'm doing quite a lot here at the museum when people come in commenting on their clothes and their atmosphere their their chemistry and things like that and then people love it uh, they do yes and uh, this is also a way of well, changing human relations, which she certainly did. Um, well, yes, talking just about, uh, we won't mention the word again, uh, the hippie scene. Uh, Kirsten Kerr was, um, I can well see more or less, uh, not so, you mentioned her like uh, the first uh, whatever, yeah. but she was also part of the gay scene, or was she not? Uh, does uh, Kirsten Kerr still have a function in that direction uh, in respect of uh, helping the, s the big revolution which is 
Well, in my head at least, um, existing, developing, which is the sexual revolution. Does Kirchenkirch any museum anything to do with that one also? I don't think so. I think that because of a slight sort of borderline paranoia, <laughs> she might have had difficulties in getting too close to people. All right. She l kept all the letters written to her, so we have it, and there are four love stories, two with men and two with women. And I have not been through it all yet, but it's very complex. Um, but I think that slight paranoia perhaps mm, made it difficult for her to have a long lasting relationship with any person. Once she said, or she has a little note saying, when I know a person by heart, I actually don't need him, her anymore. That can sound a bit cold. But she kept her friends for a long time. What's remarkable is that when she was 50 years old at her 50th anniversary, a uh, circle of friends made an asso association, Kirsten Kier's friends, which continued for all these years to support her, to pay her telephone bills, her house rent, because they saw that she couldn't administer herself and they would like to know where she was and that she had a house and things like that. And uh, she was very faithful to these friends. So but not, I mean, nothing uh, in the sort of sexual way. Uh, but I'm just sort of saying she could have close relationships, but not in a partnership, I think. But this, and she may have suffered from that. I think I know, and now it's on Dutch TV, that she did prefer the women to the men. She painted both. Uh, well, that was my uh, my impression also, actually, um, which uh, is another thing from um, the function at the moment of the uh, Kirsten Kerr Museum in that uh, way. But let th be that topic for the moment. Can you say anything about the? Uh, well, there's besides Kirsten Kerr's art, there's many other. Uh, what you mentioned, many other artists who are exhibiting here have been exhibiting here during the years. Can you say anything about the artists, uh, do you want to say anything, because I know you can, about the artists, where they come from, who are exhibiting here right now, which is nearly August nine, uh, 2000? Well, um, we have actually two German artists, not very young or hippish in any way. Uh, one is sort of what I called, and he agreed, classical abstract painting and... Um, um, and the other is, well, she comes from from a group of female artists, so I thought it would perhaps be nice and good to have relations for the Kirsten Kerr, also woman artist, with that place. I haven't seen the place or anything, but um, <coughs> I use a bit of sort of intuition. Perhaps it will be good to have that contact, and then she is there. And there's um, and from uh, London, uh, John, of course, my partner is um, British and uh, has a lot of relations with um, uh, England and London. And uh, so artists from there, they will come and stay sometime. And then we have a group of Russians, uh, even more or less on the formal base, we have a the cultural department of Ekaterinburg will send two Russians now in um, in August. I don't know them. I haven't even seen photographs of them. We are not afraid of running a risk because we have so many things that the museum can easily uh, bear to have something perhaps of different quality and I'm not I can't be the judge you know with your own van Gogh what how the his present treated him so I always say I mean, you know you never know um, 
what else do we have? Yeah, young artists should have a chance. Um, and we'd like to have different, different uh, ways of painting, abstract, more naturalistic. Uh, and we quite like to have portrait painters here, but uh, there are no criteria. And we like to have kind people here. That's very important that we think that we can get on with the people who are here because they, uh, they get very close to us. Well, uh, Harald, um, thank you very much. Can you, do you want to say anything, uh, a final remark to the Dutch public maybe, or <coughs> shall we leave it at this? Uh, I'll like say something fine, because there is a problem. When we, John and I, created this museum, and we are now around 70 years old, and how on earth will this con museum continue? Because we have worked for these 20 years without any salary, and I'm not sure that the welfare state Danes will work without a salary in the future. And now we are trying to get contact with all these young Europeans with enthusiasm, either for painting or for music, and we hope by introducing these annual getting-togethers of artists and of musicians, we will introduce some new strong life into the museum and that might help to make it survive. Thank you very much, Harold. <laughs>